Hello and welcome back, fellow history enthusiasts. Today we're peeling back the layers of time to explore a largely forgotten chapter from the aftermath of the Second World War Operation Deadlight. This British-led operation saw the intentional sinking of over a hundred German U-boats off the northern Irish coast. Strap in as we dive deep into this underwater graveyard, uncovering the mysteries and controversies that still echo in the deep. Ready to submerge into history? Let's dive into Operation Deadlight. On May 4, 1945, Großadmiral Karl Dönitz, who had been appointed by Hitler as his state successor shortly before Hitler's suicide, issued a terse order to all combat U-boats. Cease fire immediately and halt all aggressive actions against Allied ships, then return to their bases. Dönitz's mandate was simple. All U-boats cease fire at once. Stop all hostile action against Allied shipping. Dönitz. Following Donitz, Admiral Hans-Georg von Friedeberg assumed the role of Commander-in-Chief of the Kriegsmarine. He officially surrendered the German Navy at a ceremony in Reims, Germany, at 11.10 p.m. on May 7, 1945. At the behest of the Russians, a secondary signing took place in Berlin the next day. The surrender terms enveloped the entirety of the German fleet. However, aside from the cruisers Prince Eugen, Nuremberg, and Leipzig, the Kriegsmarine's surface fleet was heavily reduced. All that remained were 15 destroyers, 11 torpedo boats, and 24 minesweepers. Over the course of the war, German naval losses were substantial, with two battleships, two battlecruisers, three pocket battleships, two antiquated dreadnought battleships from 1908, three heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, 44 destroyers, 56 torpedo boats, seven armed merchant cruisers, 23 mine layers, 146 e-boats, 282 assorted minesweepers, and over 850 other armed vessels lost. Next, the Allies shifted their focus to the German submarines. Unbeknownst to them, in the final days before the end of the war, the Kriegsmarine headquarters had issued orders coded Regenbogen for crews to begin scuttling their U-boats. By May 8th, this directive led to the sinking of 195 submarines. However, excluding those deemed unseaworthy that remained in French, German, Norwegian, and Spanish ports, and others that surrendered in Canada and the USA, there were still 156 to be surrendered into British waters as per the terms of surrender. The Tripartite Naval Commission Agreement of 1945 arranged for the division of 30 of the most recent submarine models equally among the UK, USA, and USSR. Several others, deemed unfit for service, were left in their European ports. The victors were eager to seize and examine Germany's underwater arsenal, especially the innovative Type 21 and 23 Electro boots. Beyond Europe, seven former U-boats had surrendered under the Japanese flag in the Far East in August 1945, having been commandeered while docked in Japanese ports when Germany capitulated three months earlier. The 156 submarines surrendering to the United Kingdom began to arrive in UK ports from May 14, 1945, escorted by Royal Navy vessels. For many naval and Air Force personnel who had been engaged in the U-boat war since 1939, this was their first real exposure to the actual vessels and their crews. A high degree of restraint was required from both sides to avoid violating the terms of Germany's surrender. After the Allies had made their choices, for instance U-3017 was commissioned into the Royal Navy as HMS N-41 and used for testing until it was scrapped in November 1949, a total of 116 remained. These were to be sunk per the Tripartite Naval Commission terms and were transferred to either Lishali in Northern Ireland or Loch Ryan in NW Scotland for disposal. The U-boat fleet comprised 94 conventional boats and 22 of a secret new type that Germany dubbed Electroboots. Until 1942, traditional U-boats had experienced significant success in attacking convoys during nighttime surface operations, rendering ASDIC ineffective in pinpointing their locations. However, as the war progressed, the tide turned with the introduction of Allied radar-equipped aircraft and convoy escort carriers with anti-submarine attack squadrons, leading to a sudden surge in U-boat casualties. This concerning development prompted a meeting in November 1942 to assess the progress of a novel German submarine concept. Two models were developed, the larger Type 21, a 250 feet, 1,620-ton submarine with the capacity for 23 G7E torpedoes 
and the more compact Type 23, a 114 feet, 234 ton coastal version with two preloaded torpedo tubes and no additional space for reloading. In both designs, an additional full length lower deck was dedicated to expanded battery capacity, enabling the electro boots to remain submerged for several days, recharging through a snorkel. Featuring a sleek modern hull design that facilitated underwater speeds of up to 18 knots, power assisted torpedo loading, armored flak turrets replacing the deck gun, state of the art solar equipment, twin detector and transmitting search radar, a deep freeze for preserving fresh food, improved crew comfort, and the ability to fire 18 torpedoes in less than 30 minutes. The design concept was completed by January 1943 and subsequently presented to Hitler for approval in July. Building was given the green light on August 13th, but there was resistance among decision makers to halt production of conventional U-boats in favor of this untested concept. The high casualty rate of earlier types created a pressing need to continue their production. Operation Deadlight was the code name given by the Royal Navy to the process of scuttling the remaining 116 U-boats in the sea, a mission that took place between November 17, 1945 and February 11, 1946. On October 31, 1945, the Admiralty directed Vice Admiral Sir William Jock Whitworth, the Commander-in-Chief of Rosith, to begin preparations for the disposal of 30 boats located in Lishali and another 86 situated in Loch Ryan. This was to be carried out in the deep waters off the northern coast of Ireland, commencing from November 25th. The U-boats in question comprised 1 Type 2D, 76 Type 7C, 1 Type 7D, 1 Type 7F, 11 Type 9C, 4 Type 9D2, 4 Type 21, and 18 Type 23. The Royal Navy towed these unmanned boats out to sea, but the operation did not go entirely as planned. Poor weather resulted in 20 of the U-boats sinking while being towed. Demolition charges, with the exception of two instances, failed. Only 13 air attack sinkings were accomplished instead of the intended 29, and torpedo exercise attacks were cut down from 13 to 8, leaving the remaining 73 submarines to be sunk by gunfire. Overall, only 58 out of the 116 U-boats made it to the disposal zone. The rest now lie scattered along the northern coast of Donegal, at depths varying from 46 to 130 meters. The 116 U-boats resting underwater were built before the nuclear bombings of Japan in August 1945 and the subsequent nuclear weapons testing that occurred during the Cold War. As a result, the metals contained within these wrecks are free from radioactive contamination, unlike all metals produced post-August 1945. Such pre-August 1945 metals are referred to as low background steel, since contemporary steel carries a faint radioactive signal. Consequently, low background steel holds significant value and is essential in the manufacturing of various equipment, including Geiger counters, sensitive medical instruments, scientific devices, aeronautical sensors, and equipment for space exploration. Most of the submerged submarines are positioned at known coordinates, but due to opposition from Russia and the United States, the Ministry of Defense was not initially permitted to grant any salvage rights. However, rumors suggest that this policy may have been altered after 1998. These vessels are believed to rest at roughly 90 meters below sea level, and by the late 1990s, it was deemed feasible to salvage more than 50 of them. Starting in 2001, maritime archaeologist Dr. Innes McCartney, known colloquially as the U-Boat Hunter, spent three years locating, documenting, and filming numerous wrecks, including the rare Type 21 U-boats U-2506 and U-2511. Stunning images of these remarkably well-preserved submarines were captured and are now recognized as significant archaeological discoveries. Dr. McCartney summarized his quest for the last elusive submarine in an interview with War History Online on the 4th of February 2015, where he stated, our goal during the Operation Deadlight expeditions was to locate, document, and identify some of the 116 U-boats. While the majority were standard models, a few within the Deadlight fleet represented more unusual designs, including the Type 21 U-boats we explored. While U-2511 had already been discovered, another remained elusive and was a primary target of our expedition. After a month of diving spanning over two years, we finally found it. 
The hunt for U-2506 and the subsequent events made for a truly memorable chapter in my career as an archaeologist and diver, despite the wild goose chase she led us on. U-2506 was one of the last submarines to be disposed of and was towed out of Le Chalet on the 5th of January, 1946. It was supposed to be torpedoed by HMSM Templar in the designated disposal zone, but the tugboat HMT Saucy's tow line broke during the process. The submarine became uncontrollable, and the escort vessel, HMS Onslaught, had to sink it using gunfire. An important aspect of U-2506's sinking was that the tugboats involved lacked electronic position fixing equipment, leading to inaccuracies in the reported location of the submarine's sinking. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.